whose GC I won't tell you. If you fail, you're frightened. For how long, you ask? Indefinitely. You are afraid of the darkness, or rather, the insidious things that might be lurking in the shadows of it. This will last indefinitely until someone helps you. Magically. Restoration or some other equivalent. And in case you don't know what Frightened does, disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls, I believe is what it is. Now. Because this is a narrative thing, I offer you all a chance to spice up your own narrations. You guys all have some higher power tied to all of you in some way, shape, or form. Higher power, not in the necessarily a sentient sense, but the power is there. You guys can beseech this powers, your respective powers, to gain advantage on this check. However, there's a cost, and the cost will go through pass or fail. The cost is different for each of you. Do you guys want to know the cost beforehand, or do you guys just want to go into it? <laughs> I, I do not. Hell yeah! Give me, give me that cost. Tell me about it. For yeah. Ruhan, all healing done to you is halved until your next long rest. Save for those of those healing dealt by your hit dice at a short rest, as well as your second wind. So Matt Abigail tries to heal you, Varric, that's halved. Does anyone else want to know their cost? Yeah, go for it. I'm curious. For you, Fia, you have your current spell slots rounding up and your sorcery points rounding down. Uh huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah. Anyone else? No. Very well. No, Koric doesn't know, so I don't either in this case. Well, it's not a matter of, like, your characters are calling to the memes. Moreover, that they're getting invoked subconsciously, some survivalistic instinct, something like that. Now, It's not necessarily that you're actually asking for it. Now, would we have to, like, claim this now, or can we, like, see the results of what we would have? No. no. You gotta call it in. <laughs> no, I don't want to know. I'm good. Okay. Fuck, I just saw that my wisdom save is plus zero. <laughs> Shit. Oh, yeah. Advantage is a statistical plus five, right? I have a point of inspiration. It'll be fine, right? Yeah. I will say Abigail automatically get calls in her power, and she doesn't even, like, she's not even relevant for these roles. <laughs> Varric has to make a religion check to see if he can call in a power. We're going to see how our new boy is in his religious aspect. But before we get to the NPCs, not that you guys are actually seeing anything for them, so I might as well just do them now, but not that aside, I'll ask you now, who calls in their power? As players, wait. not as characters. Wait, wait, wait. Don't we have advantage on saving throws from Heroes Feast? This one actually overrides it. Oh, it's a special because, situation. Because the power that is doing this is specifically against the city and the magic in it. It's as if this place is under some sort of siege that by a force that doesn't like it. So it would override the fear immunity as well. That's some serious magic. Damn. That's a <laughs> fucking bullshittery. It's not, it's not, it is serious, but not in the sense of it's powerful. It's more in the sense of I know how you work. I know, I expect what you're going to do, and I have foreseen it and worked around it. Yeah, having a mole probably helps nice. with that. Yes, it probably does, <laughs> doesn't it? It's the same that Trader is still going to live and deliver such information and more. Oh, well. So, my friends, who calls in their power? Type one into chat, into Roll20 channel. Chat. The doobly-doo. No one. No. Give me a second. <laughs> okay, correct us. So if we fail, it's uh, we get frightened indefinitely. Frightened. Okay. And yes, 
Abigail has lesser restoration, and Varric doesn't have his prepped right now. But I suppose it's a matter of do they like you enough to cast it? Hmm. I have a plus one. Let's see, and it was wisdom, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Are any of our classes actually proficient with wisdom saves now that I think about no. it? No. <laughs> nope. Oh, God. And it was First class. Very ironic. I know. If it was charisma, it's I'd be like, perfect. hey, boy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If it was charisma, I think three out of four of you would be just fucking fine. <laughs> Honestly, if it was anything yeah. but wisdom, I'd probably. Wisdom and dexterity. Oh, glad it's not intelligence, at least, or strength. For me, it's oh, more the, okay. that Cork has um, near absolute faith in his tattoos. He feels. Hmm. Yeah, he would call on them. Regardless of the cost. <laughs> He's not a wise man. <laughs> Yeah, I think just uh, from a meta perspective, I wouldn't because I don't think you would know how to. Either. Well, again, it's not that your character is calling it. I can tell you, oh, your power is from the brooch. That's what your power is. So, again, it's not your character's calling, like, saying, help me out here. It's more of some dark shit is going to happen, and then you have a buddy amidst the darkness. Yeah, whatever. I'll, I'll, I'll call it in. Yeah, let's do it. I'm pretty beefy. I could you know, one hits as good as full HP, right? You'll need you'll need the healing, dude. You don't get hit anyways. Oh, uh, one HP is all you need. Mm-hmm. That's true. Anyone else? Um, quick question as well. See the half spell slots and half sorcery points. How, is that indefinite, or, or is that for us? Until you finish the next long rest, where you get back all your sorcery stuff and your spell slots. Oh, that's not as bad as I thought then. No, it's not your maximum. That'd be really fun, though. <laughs> That'd be really fun, though, but. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh, I told you. No, it's that. just more of a. It's as if you used them, like, you drain out. Okay, okay, that's fine. I thought it was a bit more of a lengthier thing. Um... I feel I have an idea of what the punishment would But then again, I've only got three sorcerer points, so I'd only be left with one. It's weird. Ruhans is so very unique for his. Uh, cost because he's so different from the rest of you. The remaining three of you, I think there's a little bit of similarity between all three of you. Mm. Mm-hmm. So that's that's interesting. Yeah. Pop out the chat, like the roll chat again. How do you, how do, you do this? Uh, you double tap the little uh, the little thing that looks like two chat boxes in the upper corner. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I remembered it correctly. It's just my mouse doesn't let me. Gotcha. All right. Yeah. Fuck you, roll or fuck you. Yeah. I don't know who to blame, but myself, I guess, for spelling. Yeah, I, I either need to use inspiration or take. Eh, mm, hmm. eh, yeah, fuck it. <laughs> she, needs, she needs fucking advantage in some way because I have a plus fucking zero. Mm-hmm. I have inspiration, so maybe I could reroll it. And the cost that's going to happen regardless or whatever. The cost happens pass or fail. Pass or fail, okay. See how many, how the many best thing is gonna be if we call out. it in and then we still fail the roll, so we're still frightened and it all meant fucking that nothing. Is poten- <laughs> that is a potential, but at least yeah. you spice up your character a bit, right? Trauma's art. <laughs> Alright, now here's the thing. I was going to move the, you guys around and stuff, but I really don't want to fuck with my computer right now, so I'm just gonna do your guys' scenes in just together. You know what? Yeah. Okay. Hey, Very well. hey we're all screwed together. <laughs> I mean, DC before you all roll is 16. <laughs> not unbeatable. <laughs> oh, yeah, totally uh, not. Yeah. 15, average 10, I have 11. Reroll 1 is statistically plus 5. I'm 5% more likely than not to succeed. Let's go. Same. And... <laughs> God. Unfortunate. Wisdom save. Doing Wisdom that advantage. Save. Oh, I'm oh. Fuck yeah. Also, 420. You should be very happy for that advantage. Oh, God, I'm so happy. Uh, you both should I mean, be. Damn, so well, you should job. be, but better safe than sorry. Are, are we rolling now? Roll it. Roll it. Nice, nice, nice. All right, interesting. Feels bad, man. <laughs> oh, Let's go, scared bros. Everybody's scared. I am now punished. Your guys is like for this um this friend isn't a matter of like you're like scared scoop no it's not like that it's more of you just become constantly paranoid of the shadows around you 
Uh, so you guys have all faced similar things, but uh, let me tell you uh, right now, uh, you guys are not together, not in this mental assault and onslaught that you guys all face. Your guys' vision, looking at, you know, the forward direction, the only source of light, which is Lorelai holding the Lumen Stone. I imagine she has, like, wrapped in some sort of, like, tangle. Like, tangle as in both literal tangle, like a net, but also, like, tangle as in, like, the sea life. Kelp. Some sort of tangle, tangle, which is at her hip. You guys see that light get swallowed by darkness, each of you. And you guys are all now in your collective mindscapes. You guys hear out in the darkness around you, the sun darkness. You're a lot more spacious now, at least. <laughs> no wall is closing in on you. You guys hear all in the darkness slithering. This sort of slimy mucus -y, this. <laughs> So imagine some Cthulhu shit, or uh, I guess you guys sort of got also a sound of similar to this when you guys went to the Void, and you guys went to the Feywilds, uh, stuff like that. But yeah, this... Just from all around you. And even in this darkness, this seems ultra dark, you know, in the sense of it absorbs light, which is also why some forms of camouflage in the dark don't work. But that aside, you guys see this ultra dark tendrils. Yes, I'm going to use the word tentacles and not in any anime sense these tentacles Thank God. are slowly approaching just sort of creeping up on all of you we'll do it by the order you guys rolled in roll 20. ruhan as you are observing i guess these tendrils readying yourself to face them they lash out at you just like a not like a whip a whip is like no, this is more like stabbing you, um, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, you parry some, you chop some, but they seem, the ones that you hurt just get pulled back into the mass of this unknown darkness. A light appears from behind you, striking down one tendril that was in your blind spot, which is probably a lot of, now I think about it, because you guys are in pitch darkness, but anyways, a glowing figure. A knightly figure, you might call her. Shield, sword, the classic image, truly, of what a knight is. And you guys are back to back to one another, her light giving some illumination to the tendrils around you. You get to see a bit more of their definition, so to speak. And she says to you as you guys are facing this onslaught, Live or die. Stand tall. Stand noble. And then you both get set to keeping yourselves, well, safe from these tendrils, cutting them down like trees. But there's just always more of them. My friend, you have halved healing for the time being, except for ones by your own volition. Hopefully you don't need healing in the first place. <laughs> Hopefully. Knowing you, your build though, you probably won't get hit that often, but you know. Especially with new something. fucking buffed armor. Yeah. Oh, did uh, Varric give him the defense rune again? Or, not rune, um, do do do. Well, that's a, well, here's, here's the bit. Uh, uh, maybe, I think he has a defense rune from this morning, but We'll get to that in a moment. Yeah. We gotta do you guys first. Next up is Rose. I gotta say, like, between the four of you, you have a supportive power, which is Ruhan, uh, a neutral power, which is Fia, and then the other two just straight up are assholes. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're not assholes, but they're not, like, your friend. I'll put mm. it like that. So, Rose, her next up. I just want to give you guys a change in tone, like ahead of time. Like, you aren't, you aren't it's like, these guys are kind of like helping you to help you. No, these guys are here for business. Yeah, I'll tell you your cost after the scene. Mm -hmm. So, for you, Rose, similar deal. You are in this darkness. You have your bow ready. You're shooting at tendrils, pinning them to the ground, which they just rip backwards and rip like a part of their own segment off, like not really caring for having just dismembered themselves. You're in a darkness surrounded by an unknown mass, writhing mass of tentacles. 
you get a faint glow from behind you, this sort of grayish glow. For Ruhan scene, that's like bright white. That's like Dark Souls, you summon a phantom light. Oh, uh, this one, it's like a pale gray glow. Uh, and you're like, this catches your attention like at your mid shot, shooting at something. But before you could turn around to face it, uh, you feel a boot to your bum <laughs> that, kick, that kicks you forward. But towards the tendrils, I might add. Not like into them, but like like it stumbles you In and you direction. are like like a few feet more closer. And then you hear from behind you, like while you're like face pointed on the ground, just you hear from behind you a Heartlandic accent. Too slow, go figure. And then a bright light happens. And you see like a tendril which is creeping closer to you as you're getting back up. It just gets vaporized. And you turn around to see what, who it was doing this. Uh, they're human, or humanoid at least. They are a, how to describe it, uh, fluid form. Like, as if they're made of running water. Looks, not really 100% certain where he's from. I mean, you know Heartland, Heartlandic accent, yeah, but you don't really know, like, what history, order, anything like that. He just looks at you and just looks like over his shoulder at like the tendrils, which are creeping up on him now. And he just holds out his hand behind him and then it's like Iron Man style, just <laughs> vaporizes them too. Come on. Yep. He doesn't like offer a hand to bring you up. He just grabs you by the pauldron, and just hefts you up. Kevin be waiting. And he turns around like he was looking at you when he said that. He turns around, noting more tentacles. We'll talk soon enough. That's where your scene ends. Your guys' mental battles are cut short by something. Your cost, Rose. Let's see. The cost. You cannot use any warlock spellcasting because you only have one level in it nor your hex plates curse until you're net you finish a long rest. That's about what I expected. <laughs> Disappointingly. So yeah. Who is this mysterious figure? Who knows? Bring Who knows? In like 10 seconds. He certainly doesn't really care for having to save you though. Next up, Fia. Mm -hmm. Our neutral party here. Fia, you don't get a person saving you. Uh, as you're approached by these waves of tentacles and tendrils, ultra dark material, extra shadowy shadows amidst the darkness, you're blasting them. You know that you're not in water anymore. It doesn't seem like you are. It's, it's, it's like you're standing on water, but you're not in water because you're casting these cantrips out of instinct, and your fire's fine. Produce, yeah, produce flame to give yourself some light to shoot with. You're not in water. You're standing on it, but you're not in it. Very interesting. You feel a surge of power. I personally have never been hit by lightning. Give it time. Fingers crossed. <laughs> I'll, be like, I'll be like Duco. But this spark of power is reminiscent of the time you got struck by lightning. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're afraid it's gonna kill you for a second. Because uh, guess what? Getting struck by lightning, emanating from your heart, usually means you're on your way out of the mortal coil. But no, it instead blasts out with purpose and direction from your heart across your arms, and then you're now basically Emperor Palpatine. It sort of <laughs> lightning stuff all over the place, electricity. These like sort of like a you're like a walking Tesla coil like, arcs off of you, striking tendrils that you don't see or, like, are in, aren't in your blind spot or just simply not in your uh, perspective of vision. Just... <laughs> it certainly saves you. It certainly helps. You hear a voice in your head. Female. Mm -hmm. 
Very short. Five words. A wise man's fear indeed. That's it. That's all you hear from them. But you're happy with the power that it's giving you. <laughs> Allowing you to not only produce light in a lot of fucking flashes, but also that you're basically defended because this lightning just... This lightning arcing out of you just protecting you from anything in a certain radius around you. So the tendrils never get to you. Good for you. Yay! You already know you're caught. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Thank you. Last, but certainly not least, Cork. <laughs> Amidst the darkness and the extra dark tendrils, you can feel power flare in your dermals, in your skin. From any exposed spots of your tattoos, a light begins glowing, a dull red, but any light in the darkness is visible and obvious. Similar to how you conjure up your shadow blades, that sort of crimson smoke begins emitting around you. You call out a shadow blade just out of instinct, curiosity, defense, who knows? It doesn't cost a spell slot, don't worry. But it isn't right when you conjure it. It seems a bit... The shape of it is different. The feel of it is different. In the split second that you're noting this, a tendril does lash out at you, just try to stab you from behind, but it instead hits this uh, aura that is now surrounding you, and the smoke emanating from your tattoos, and it disintegrates like as it comes into contact with it. Just <laughs> Not all of it in its entirety, but any part that tries to push past this barrier gets cut short. You notice something, and as you notice this, dodging, slashing some tendrils that are also trying to latch out of you, you notice that Crax is not with you. As you notice this, you hear that familiar caw of a raven. Or crow, my bad. Well, I guess caw. raven. Whatever. Thank you. Echo. A, a sort of like omnisciently around you. But then you hear a voice. A man's voice. Condescending, amused, you're not 100% certain. Regardless, you know that he finds the predicament you're in entertaining. Oh, having a hard time. <laughs> and his laugh echoes out and fades and fades and fades. And you're left to we have some defense to you, but not anyone watching your back. Not, not cracks either. Fend off these tendrils. Your cost. Cork. Let's see. Yeah. You, you lose your pack spell slots. You cannot use it or use it for sorcery points. It's as if you don't have it until the next long rest. Same for your mystic arcanum. You also lose cracks and the benefits of having that bird on your shoulder until the, you finish a long rest. Oh. So, passive perception up, dark vision. Fine. And, of course, those of you that didn't get natural 20s, which is pretty ironic in a weird sense, they stole your luck. You guys gotta average it out. Either you out. fail or you nat 20. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, are frightened. That being said, I think Abigail likes you too, maybe. Uh, we'll see. Uh, you guys don't know what Abigail's scene is, although I'm pretty sure you guys can take a fucking guess as to what power she conjures up to help her. And that power is <laughs> something. What about our boy Varric? Our boy Varric? Let's see if he has a religion. The same DC, nah, 16. One, nah, one, nah, one. Oh, fuck, I forgot I can't use fucking scroll wheel. But up, but up. Now, he's a plus five to religion because it's an imp based stat. That means that it is still statistically like not, not like, probable. It's like, not, not 50 50. It's like, uh, boo. It's like 55 45. It's not as Let's find out. Ooh, That's he's fine. He rolled a 16. He rolled a 16. So he gets advantage on this. So he's not even out of the woods yet. He also has a plus one to wisdom, by the way, which is super fun. That being said, he has a cost. It's just like you guys. 
Oof. Okay. Didn't need the advantage. Didn't need the advantage, but he he made it. Okay. So he's not frightened, but he does have a cost. What is his cost? You might add. Might ask. Um, he has his spell slots rounded down, and one of the trappings he has active goes offline until he finishes a long rest. Oh, perfect. There, there are two trappings out there right now. One on him and one on Ruhan. I'm sorry to say, Ruhan, please disable the defensive augment upon yourself. Because Varric's not turning off his, that's for sure. <laughs> I now have to have his spell slots, which is fun. So he goes from four and two to two and one. Ouch. Ouch. And he doesn't get short rest spell slots, so it's gonna hurt. What is the scene that you guys, or what is the thing that cuts your guys' mental defenses short? It is Lorelei, unsurprisingly. You guys are simply just brought back to where you were. The light, that luminous stone that she had before is now present again. You guys are submerged once more. And she's holding in her hands this jagged crystal, this black, hazy crystal. It's like a dark soul gem, or black soul gem from like Skyrim or something like that. And it's just snapped in half. Or rather, shattered in half, not snapped. That makes it sound clean. And she just looks at it, and you guys can see, like, from, like, those tendrils you guys were, that were assaulted by it, there's, like, those coming from the crystal. The place where she broke it in half, roughly. It's as if they're, like, trying to piece themselves back together, like, trying to sew itself back into one piece. Just these little tiny tendrils. Just... She just throws one down one way and the other one up the other way. We have to go now. And she begins, like... She gives the stone to... Who, who's in front? Who who would you... I think most of you guys said you're in the back, so I don't really know. Uh, I'm up front. She gives the stone to you, Ruhan, and just says, hold on to this for dear life. And she begins hurriedly moving out of this jagged, tight corridor. Or I say corridor. Uh, oh, which way is she going? Is she like progressing? Just going forward. She's basically Ooh. gotten it. Before she was trying to like look down certain ways to like ascertain, like like trying to remember like where they led. Now she's just going a direction. She's holding W on the keyboard and not doing anything else. Oh, we we should go back. We should we should, we should find another way. This is the fastest way. Playing that playing that frightened stats. I like it. Yeah, he just like starts to like head back, but like I guess there's probably too many people heading behind <laughs> him. It's just like walking into a wall from both directions. It's like, oh uh, god, we have okay, to pass yeah. into the turn. He logics it out real quick. Okay, like the, these these people are gonna get me killed. Like, no, 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 I can't, I can't follow him. I gotta follow her. <laughs> That's so. He's gonna get double what's up. <laughs> Logical of you. You guys follow Lorelai. Well, Ruha and you in specific, because you're the one that, that can 1,000% hold the rest of the group back. Uh, but you guys follow Lorelai out. L you guys have been traveling in these tunnels for like 30 minutes already. Or, uh, not 30, probably like 25. It takes five minutes additional to get out, making it even 30. You guys are back on the light. You guys see the light spilling into, this dark into these dark tunnels. And Lorelai's already like up and out of them, looking around and frantically gesturing you all to like hurry up, like get out there. And I imagine it takes much of a motivation for you guys to do so. As, as soon as everybody's out, Korik is going to turn around and force himself to stand at the very mouth of this uh, exit and just shield and sword ready and just stare straight into this, ready to stab at anything coming. And he's just his heart is in his throat. He's just he's just <laughs> amped up on adrenaline. You can literally see the tension in him and it he's just stiff as a, a fight board. or fight reflex yeah. so just you stare at the void in the darkness wondering if it will stare back at you. 
nothing emerges from it though. Though yeah, you're wondering uh, if something's waiting in there. Ruhan would see this and be like, no, we to get out of there, we have to go. <sighs> Uh, Rose will tap on the shoulder cautiously. It it kind of it it looks like she's trying to like disarm like a mousetrap kind of situation. I'm just like I don't know if he's about to fucking swing around with me with a sword. So you tap you so you tap him with like one finger like very like, yeah, like yeah. quick like <laughs> being ready to move. Yeah yeah yeah. Very sort of startled. Corlick Corlick almost shield slams you as he spins around, <laughs> realizing what he's doing. Just hey, okay, okay. Also, the water helps a bit because you know shield <laughs> water. <laughs> A lot of resistance, surface resistance. Yeah, so he catches himself before he actually does anything. But yeah, you, you can tell that he's rattled. It's fine now. The sooner we get away from this shit, the better. Just don't worry about it. Let's go. I don't just I just leave him if he wants to stay. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, oh. I mean... Oh, I Hey, something that's what you like fucking figure. happens. Corrick, Corrick nods at that. Like, yeah, that's the reasonable thing to do. I gotta make sure nothing bites us in the ass here. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, Lorelai. Well, if you, if you come with us, then nothing's gonna sneak in behind us, between us and you. How about that? Here's the thing. We, we're, for most parts, when you guys travel in the water, it's pretty open terrain, because I imagine you guys aren't swimming like, like your face is touching the, the sea floor. I imagine you guys swim like I don't know, 20, 15 feet up or something like that. At least not right now because you guys are next to the walls. You guys can see the walls right there. They're only like some 90 feet away. Uh, but I imagine for later in your guys' travel, you guys basically have some sight line all around. Just saying. That's how I imagine it. And that's the state otherwise. Oh, this reminds me. This is probably the first time you've seen most of Korik's tattoos in their almost entirety. Oh, yeah, because you're wearing different attire. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, how to describe it? It's kind of like... Two... Circular patterns on his back that you would see because he's facing away from you. Uh, going in almost like a swirl towards the center where there's this more central symbol that's interconnected with all the... Uh, um, almost like rows of little symbols, arcane symbols going outward. Uh, and uh, there's a, a soft glow to all of them right now that you would notice uh, against the backdrop. He is a man standing at the edge of the dark void. Did uh, the two mental references I have are uh, Balder from... Uh, hmm. Uh, God of War, yeah, you God mentioned. God of War, and the Constantine, Constantine from the comics. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like a cross Appreciate between the two. It. We don't have you guys time. Leave them? No. <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> we don't have time. I don't know. You guys posited the potentiality. I was just curious. Yeah, the two people scared out of their goddamn minds. <laughs> We have time for yeah, to leave Korn, you. You come will, with us, or I'm unconscious. But he, he's he's definitely keeping an eye over his shoulder. That's fine. He's, yeah, I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel the longer we hang around, the more likely something's gonna pop up. So. Agreed. Let, let us be off. Yeah. Also, be very unfortunate if the guards on the walls caught us now. Get me back with the bottle worth nothing. So, now I'm sure you're wondering, Abigail has lesser restoration. Will she, and she has two pack spell slots, will she cast him right now to help two, the exactly two people? Hmm. Let's see. You guys haven't been mean to Abigail. You guys have been, Ruhan certainly more, you guys have been entertaining to Abigail in different ways. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, her and Varric's dating history is certainly its own charming thing, but in this fairy tale of Princess Lorelei and Justira, Sister of the Swells, a dash of romance can certainly go a long way, and a hint of mystery and 
conflict against the f king himself. Oh, my goodness. It'd certainly make a good tale. She casts Lesser Restoration on both of you. <laughs> so you guys are no longer frightened. You guys probably have a seed of paranoia still there, but it's not an entire cornfield of it. <laughs> Uh, so Abigail does not have her pack spell slots, and you guys will not be stationary to recover such. So, don't worry, she still has, like, the rest of her fucking, uh, spells. Because Abigail has no cost. She just wins, because that's what happens when you sell your soul entirely, right? So, yeah. To Ruhan and Cork, you're no longer frightened. Go you. Your costs still remain, though. You, you you guys would see the tension just sort of bleeding out of him and the intensity it's almost like the the tattoos themselves dull a bit as the adrenaline evaporates hmm, how to how to do this oh fuck you guys know in in lord of the rings the two towers what's that guy called the the fucking advisor the evil one the oh yeah no, 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 not the Sauron. Uh, oh, Grima Wormtongue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. In a, in a style... Actually, Wormtongue. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, we all have the ladies, I'm sure. Anyways. Similar in a... Not as evil manner as that, but in as conspiratorial and hushed whisper or to like style as that. Abigail, like, just swims over to you. Don't, remember, don't forget, you guys have rebreathers on. But uh, she swims over to you and whispers to you. This is her cast transformation as she puts a hand on you. Oh, come now. Come on. Strong face for the princess. You know, the one you're trying to... What was it he said? Mate with? <laughs> come on. There's a huge, like... Fear is unbefitting for the saber. Because he tries not to laugh. No fear, just hope. And she swims away as she casts Lesseration on you. She then goes over to Ruhan. Are you okay? No, we, we need to go. Get out of there. Did you see what was in there? We are out of there now, Ruhan. We'll be fine. Look at all uh, of us. No. We're fine. Oh, okay, fine. You stay. I'll go. Ruhan, and she like, like grabs like your leg as you're swimming away. And like it's like someone like sketching, which is you know grabbing onto like a moving vehicle while on like roar blades or skateboarding or whatever. It's like she she, she like follows you by literally hanging on your your coattail or tabber tail or whatever it is, and then she like uses that and uses your uh your limb as like a point to like pull herself and like sort of dart ahead of you, drafting using you as a draft, and she and she just puts a hand on your head as she like rushes ahead of you, Ruhan. It's okay. We're all here together. No, you don't understand. I can see into the future and something was in there. <laughs> it is coming for us. I'm sure it is. And when it does, we'll win. That's how these tales end. She casts us restoration on you. These tales only end badly for cowards. And I know you have doubts at times, but you are not a coward to me. I would just sort of like glaze over and come to and like look back and just like just grab her and hold her probably a little bit too tight. Uh, see, a coward would certainly not do this. Not while my boyfriend's right there. <laughs> Barrick is ignoring the, the exchange. Also, like, probably a little bit too long. Barrick notes the exchange. It's Ooh. fine. Let go. He, like, taps you, taps your arm. Oh, sorry, sorry about that. It's fine. Have your wits about um, you now. More so. Um, Lorelai, what was that? Yeah, you guys are like only like two minutes away from that hole. I'll explain when we're past the reaches of the caverns. I'm assuming that doesn't normally happen. No. Hmm. Now come on. 
Yeah, as, I'd like to get some distance as, between us. Uh, as you guys are swimming, Abigail like is still next to you, you Ruhan, and she just gives one last moment or quip. You know, my father always said that even brave men feel fear. In fact, you need fear to be brave. It's okay. I'm sure you'll have your time of bravery during our adventures. And she swims ahead to catch up to Verk. Uh, he, he starts to say something and then just, just stops and thinks. Please don't stop that long. <laughs> 30 seconds pass, and then one of you gets down, I was like grabbing him or something, I don't know. So, you guys leave past where even the farthest reaching tunnel, as far as Lorelai knows, um, the farthest reaching tunnel goes, and then you guys are able to uh, sit down, regroup.